Hey everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comedian and host of Bachelor Recap, A Guy's Review. In yesterday's video, I talked about my opinion as to why Taysha chose Zach over Ivan. Ivan had said he was dumped because of religious reasons. He's agnostic, she's Christian, and uh, my whole thesis was that it was mainly because she just wasn't that into Ivan and she liked Zach better. This led to a ton of comments from all of you that talked about religion and race and how it all played out within the Bachelor community and also in society at large. Now, nothing is more complicated than talking about race and religion, especially coming from a pasty white man like myself. So in this video, I'm going to read a ton of comments from people of all diverse backgrounds, uh, different people of color, uh, religious differences, this and that. And I'm going to have a conversation uh, with my buddy King Hassan, who's a very funny stand-up comedian, and he's one of the only black guys I know that watches The Bachelor franchise. Not many guys are watching The Bachelor, but he's out there, and we're spreading gossip about the show, and uh, you'll enjoy that conversation. So my chat with King is at the end. All right, let's jump right into it, okay, folks? So uh, what I wanted to talk about today is what does Taisha choosing Zach over Ivan say about our cultural obsession with race relations? Zach, a white guy from Philly, Ivan, a mixed-race guy from Texas. Uh, this all started by a YouTube commenter asking me to look into why some folks are disappointed that Taisha chose the white guy over the mixed race guy. Uh, she said, hey, Dave, please take a minute to understand why some people are disappointed about a woman of color choosing a white guy and allow the voices to be heard. It's easy to say there's already progress. Let's not exaggerate, but there's a huge analysis behind those comments and it's complex. I thought it was great how you went and talked to women about matters of stalking. Maybe do the same with women of color and the problem of oppression with regards to black and white relationships. Well, your wish is my command. Let's have this conversation. Uh, by the way, it is a storm-ridden day here in Los Angeles. You can hear the sirens out there. Uh, lightning, rain, a fitting end to 2020. Just wash the city away, please. Uh, so what does it mean to be disappointed that a reality TV contestant chose someone outside of your racial mix? Look, I can empathize in that we tend to root for our own kind, right? It's hard to see Taisha pass up on a guy that represents who you might be, and you might feel like it's a loss for your team if you wanted Ivan to win. And by win, I mean, you know, engage, get engaged and all that. Uh, find love, which I think we can all agree we all like to find love. So I asked members of the Chatty Broad Facebook group to offer their opinion. I'm in a few different Facebook groups that have to do with Bachelor. Some of them are real cesspools of hatred, vitriol, like spewing, race baiting, this and that. Chatty Broad's pretty sophisticated group of ladies over there. They have uh, good conversations that provide a ton of value, really insightful stuff. So I'll read some of their comments. Um, and look, I'm aware of my skin tone and assumed upbringing, and it would be very cringeworthy for me to just spout all these thoughts on race without uh, sort of doing a lot of listening. So um, there's a lot of bandwidth here on YouTube, and this uh, being a, a time to hear from other people, we'll just have this nice long video here. Again, don't expect to solve any issues, but you know, shed light on some of them. Um, all right, so let's move on. So, like I said, the second half of this video is a conversation I had today with my buddy King Hassan. King is a hilarious stand-up comedian, writer, performer. He offered some really good insight as to what it's like as a black viewer uh, watching The Bachelor franchise. So, uh, stick around for that. And uh, with complete uncertainty that I'm getting this right, I am going to continue right about now. You can tell I'm trying to tread water here and uh, be as respectful as possible. I appreciate you guys in the comment section with your respect as well. I, I must say, you know, some people have really ugly YouTube comment sections, but we've always maintained a lot of respect here and I appreciate that. I think it's a two-way street, so I thank you for that. So Brianna said uh, that she always found it interesting now that the two times that we had black bachelorettes, they have chosen white or white-looking guys. It will be very interesting how it plays out with Matt James. Of course, next week, Matt James will be our first black bachelor. Uh, he, I, I think it is. this is an interesting topic because I heard Rachel Lindsay that, uh, say that a huge part of diversity on the show is obviously the preferences of the lead. So they need to cast boys and girls who don't just like white boys and girls makes it very interesting makes complete sense as part of the casting process and all that i said i've noticed most black men on the bachelorette kind of play it safe when they don't pursue the bachelorette the same way as non-black contestants when i watched ivan kiss Tasha, there was nothing there just lips pressed together they were at best kissing cousins but nothing romantic or hot ever sparked at least to me um said Tasha seemed to generally be drawn to white men. If you look back over her history, and I don't see it as a racial matter whatsoever, everyone has their preference, and as long as people are respectful, Tasha being our most respectful queen, there's nothing to worry about, which is very fair, 
we can't judge people for uh, what they're attracted to. I think the question becomes more about societal impressions and what we value and why we perceive certain people to be a better catch than others, a caste system and all this. We'll get into it. So some news had reported that Tasha Adams has been vocal this season about her experience growing up biracial in a predominantly white community. Uh, Adams, Tasha Adams is from Orange County, California, where 71% of the population is white and only 3.6% identify as being multiracial or biracial. Said, I think just the fact that we're having these meaningful conversations is important, not to mention couples and interracial relationships still face issues that need to be discussed as well. There are still plenty of parts of the U.S. that don't agree that couples of different races or religions should be together. It's a problem that needs to be addressed so that we can keep the discussion going about how to fight these outdated views. So important. And this is something that the Bachelor community has taken on because it really is the main water cooler place for our society to talk about the progressive ideas, which sound pretty outdated to me, but a lot of, you know, people in our country still live on the cul-de-sac with, you know, people that look the same as them. And by seeing a multi-racial couple, mixed racial couple kissing on a dating show might not seem much to you, but it is progress when it comes to just having a discussion about valuing people that look different than us. I know it sounds mind blowing to say, but um, it's almost like a little bit of a Trojan horse that we can do this on the show, The Bachelor, because I'm telling you, people that watch Fox News, people that watch CNN, people that stick to their media, they're not necessarily getting a, a differencing of opinions. They're kind of reinforcing whatever fears they have in their life. If they enjoy a show like The Bachelor, maybe you can sneak in someone like Tasha and go, oh, she likes this guy. Oh, they're having a conversation about Black Lives Matter. Oh, you know, it's not some crazy, you know, whatever the case may be said, I'm hoping that we'll get to see more diverse couples from Bachelor in Paradise. Instead of being solely focused on one person's preferences, having a mixed race cast on BIP would give a lot more opportunities for exposure to different relationships. I completely agree. You know, when you're focused on one person like Tasha, you lose guys like Riley, who's just an amazing dude and wasn't necessarily Tasha's cup of tea, but it's like, let's get these guys out there. We want to see, you know, we want to see equal representation for everyone. Of course. A lot of weight is put onto Bachelor and Bachelorette as there's one suitor at a time, um, or one lead at a time. He said, I'm not black, so I can't speak to the black experience, but I'm a person of color from cultures that also suffer from colorism, internalized racism, and a caste system. I think the backlash a lead faces when they select outside their own culture ethnicity is that some people see that as a manifestation of internalized racism. Like, yes, a person may hold preference for white partners, but that doesn't exist without influence. Examining why a person of color often show deference to YT light-skinned partners is a very important conversation in most minority cultures. And the only time it really comes to the forefront is when we see a real-life person of color, not a fictional character, choosing that kind of partner. So reality dating shows for the most part. And like, like I was saying before, yeah, this is the reality dating shows. It's like the only place that's having this conversation right now where we can see this in the public eye. It's really unfair to expect people like Rachel and Tasha to explain the symbolism of their choices and they're kind of forced to do so because of the lack of meaningful mainstream conversation around the topic. I think the frustration of the lack of representation creates unneeded pressure in the wrong places. If we saw more diversity in the love stories portrayed in the media, especially in reality TV, I think we'd see fewer of these lightning rod, hey, woman of color, explain why you chose this person moments. The conversation needs to take place, though. It's funny to me that even amongst my progressive friends, there seems to be a repetitive preference for people who conform to the Eurocentric beauty standard. Like, I've talked about this before. When it comes to the war of art, which is about procrastinating with things that are important to us, we realize this is such a heavy topic. Let's just not talk about it. Let's save it for tomorrow. And the struggle there is that media companies don't want to deal with it. No one wants to really have these deep conversations that is that we're forced to watch them play out in like reality TV. And I think it's very important for people to be okay having these conversations. I'm okay if I'm getting it wrong right now. I'm sure in the comment section, someone will let me know something I said wrong. Of course, that's okay. It's about having like the barometer pointed in the right direction. I think that's more important. And that's, I think what we'll find out. With Matt James season upcoming, will it be any different? Um, will, is, do they cast Matt James? Is he a guy who dates um, outside his uh uh, eth ethnicity I mean who knows I don't know much about him I do know he's friends with Hannah Brown and Tyler Cameron and the three of them together look like a Land's End catalog don't they <laughs> look like they should just be modeling sweaters uh, or you know bathing suits the whole time 
Anyway, uh, the ba- is The Bachelor doing a good enough job providing contestants with meaningful diversity? These are the questions we're looking into. And look, The Bachelor's come a long way, and society has in general with bringing a different, uh, you know, different colored people and people of diverse backgrounds to the show. Uh, it wasn't without um, literal petitions in protesting that people like Rachel Lindsay said they were going to just cancel being a part of Bachelor Nation before they were able to get some other people of color on the show. So they they've been do, they've been uh, pushed in the right direction. I'll see, and, and you know it's just a it's a stepping stone. So anyway, next up, what you're about to watch is in my conversation I had earlier today with my friend King Hassan. I called him last minute because I wasn't sure I was going to even make this video, and I had people nudging me saying, "Dave, you need to you need to be talking to." You need, a, you need a shaman. You need somebody who's uh, got some diversity uh, and watches the show to, to have uh, to voice their opinion. I completely agree. I got to know him this past year before uh, the world shut down. And the conversation you'll, you're about to watch is exactly the type of conversation King and I would have in a green room before a stand-up show. It is a perfect example of just two dudes that come from different backgrounds, that have different color skins, that watch the same show. And I think more people are like this than not. I think more people... Uh, have more in common than they do apart. And unfortunately, through social media, through uh, larger forces like media and clickbait and monetization of clicks, I think that um, we're shown our differences more than what brings us together, right? We're all humans, universe, one song. We're all trying to figure this out together. So I really loved this conversation. So enjoy my chat with King. You just texted me the other night about... um about right. uh, watching the show. So what's your involvement in the show? You've been you've been up to date with it? Yeah. Yeah, I've been I've been I've been watching probably like uh four seasons. Can I just say can I just say this real quick? It Wait. is so funny to watch a group of guys be so excited about the bachelorette and to tell the bachelorette, "Oh, when I found out it was you, I had to get on the show." I was like, the only way you would have known about her is if you were watching it with your girlfriend at the time. Anyway, that's his own, that's his own thing. It's a community, man. It's a weird place. You right. know? I'm really glad I never got into it on the user level. I've just, <laughs> I don't, you know what I mean? Once you're in it, you can't get out of it. Right, but it's true. I've gotten a ton of comments from people in some of these communities that have said oh, a whole bunch of different things, but I wanted to float one of them by you. Um, uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just read the comment and then you can let me know what you think. Um, said my partner's black watches with me, and so while I can only speak as a white woman, I can also share the conversation we had. As a mixed race couple, we're always thrilled to see mixed race couples in mainstream media, and having two come out of one bachelorette season is obviously totally unprecedented and really cool. But as a black man, my partner said that he would really love to see and would feel most represented by a show where. Um, uh, uh, black uh, indigenous people of color contestants were actually regularly chosen by the lead. Ultimately, yes, you love who you love, but that's incredibly easy to say when wholeheartedly um, you're always, your race is always being shown as a desirable life partner on a show about sweeping whirlwind romances. I wish she could have seen someone that looks like him getting that representation uh, regularly too, not just as a lead, but as a final contender. So I guess that that's the whole idea is like, there's, it's a small sample size of of um, mixed race leads that ended up choosing basically white guys. Right. Well, in Rachel's defense, he was Cuban, right. so there, uh, there's uh, that. Colombian. Colombian. Yes. Right. Oh, my bad. Hey. <laughs> hey, I was trying to. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, okay. So, because I'm I'm still not sure what his gripe is because the first the first half. Uh, a black guy was chosen right and then the second half a black girl chose a white guy right that's that's a good point that we we did glaze over is that not only did claire choose a black guy she chose him fast right so fast so (laughs) So i got him i gotta go exactly so that's like two points right there that she chose him that fast so yeah, so I mean, I just feel like it's the every everybody everybody got to be chosen and to be picked, and so everybody should be happy. But even regardless, the one thing I did like about that is because we like society places so much emphasis on skin color, and and that and whether it has credence or not, you watch the you watch uh, Tasha and who was the black guy that was like third Ivan. 
Ivan. You watch Tasha and Ivan really connect based on their race. And there came a, a point, and I believe that the reason why he ended up leaving is because they weren't equal, uh, evenly yoked. Like they didn't, their faith wasn't in the, in the right place. Right. And as a Christian and as a black person who's been married multiple times, I'm letting <laughs> you know the Christian part or the, whether you're Christian or like what you believe in as a faith, how you're going to raise your children is so like, it's, it's just the greater of the two. Because like the race stuff, you can figure it out. But like, if you don't believe in the same thing, like what are you telling your children and how are you raising your children if like you guys do not believe in the same type of faith? And so the fact that they were able to come to that decision and be like, as much as we love each other and like each other and we want to move on with each other, like, yeah, it's just not going to work if I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you. And we don't believe, you know, I'm guessing one of them was an atheist, I'm assuming. Agnostic. So he said he just didn't know and he didn't, you know, he was kind of indifferent, I guess you would say. Yeah, you don't marry that person if you are right. of faith. Like, so like. And my argument was just that she just didn't like him that much because she never said it was because of faith, but he was kind of like, you know how it is as a guy, you look, you look for clues as to why you got dumped. You're like, oh, I guess she doesn't like guys with nice hair. It's like, no, bro. <laughs> it's because I cried after I drank too much and she didn't want to take care of me. Like we're always yeah. like looking for ways to fix things. And it's like, in the end, she just isn't into you. But you're right though, with, with religion, you have to be uh, at least on the same page. I had never heard the term yoked until I've released this video yesterday. You're like the fifth person to, yeah. Oh. I was raised Catholic. We don't get into uh, real terms. Catholic oh. is uh, <laughs> Christian light. I was the Tecate light of alcohol, but- um, Yeah, and, and being... I, I feel, I feel, I, I am ashamed to say this, but there was no way in hell I believe for a second she was gonna choose a black guy, just from the beginning. Cause we, or she started her journey with who? What's what's his name? <sighs> um, she's been with a few different guys in the show, Colton, the first, and then Colton, exactly. Right. So she, so she started with Colton, and then she left Colton, or Colton left her, or whatever. Uh, and that's a whole nother episode yeah. we didn't get into. <laughs> but uh, so, and then she was with uh, John Paul Jones or John John Paul. John, yeah, JPJ. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like she's pretty, I thought she was gonna, honestly, I thought she was gonna get with Bennett like the whole time. So I just felt like she had a very specific type. And, now, and she said, she said she was raised in Orange County and she was, she was considered in the minority. So she would kind of see more, more white people in her sort of society. And then part of the questions people are asking me on, um, on Facebook and on the YouTube comments is, is it more of a societal thing where, where we're kind of trained to want to like date up or date into a different class. Is it more like a class issue? Is it, you know, because this has been, or, or, and sorry to be confusing here, or did Bachelor, are they just picking people that are in that tighter white community? Like, are they just not casting people that are actually dating um, outside their race as much? I mean, I think that, I mean, I, I don't know how, how they, how they end up getting, chosen like you know what i mean um but i do feel i do feel like there is a because you you framed it like that there's this societal pressure to date up and then then you kind of have to go into like well what's up is white up is like you know what i mean like exactly. like, like it, it, it it's a it's a dirty it's a dirty concept that we try to dance around but i feel like I feel like the hardest part is choosing a life partner in front of 20 million people. Oh, and yeah. so like all of your, all of your insecurities uh, like come to play, like, you know what I mean? Like uh, in the last season um, with the pilot, Peter, was that who yep. it was? Yeah. With Peter, you like, you, you saw all the holes in his, in his personality that, you know, put him in a lot of the same, like the wrong places. And so, yeah, I, it's hard when race comes into play because we do enter into dating with all these preconceived notions and all the societal tellings of what it is. And it's hard to put yourself in a place where you can kind of be above that.
You know, it was it was actually is very interesting. And of course, we're also some of these contestants are so young. It's like, what do we even think a 24 year old knows what they're doing in the first place? Like there's so right. there's so much to it all and where you find your attraction. And all these guys were chosen for Claire, who is a white mixed um, Latina, whatever. I'm not I'm not exactly sure. I'll probably get in trouble for even not knowing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but so they were chosen for her. And then Tasha comes along completely, you know, vibrant. I mean, and she was just such a relief because, you know, Claire was very anxious. She's yelling at the uh, guys. I saw right through it because I know with my fiance, if she gets anxious about something going on, she's going to start throwing haymakers. Right, said, right, right. All right. I get it. You feel cornered. You don't hate me. <laughs> I totally get it. So it's like, we're all trying our best with the info we have. We all know that. But, um, but for me to even talk about this, you know, I'm glad some people said, Hey, you know, don't, don't, you know, it's like, it's like walking across a shallow shark infested air. I'm just kind of like, don't say the wrong thing because I, it's hard to have empathy because I'm not, I don't walk through the same shoe. I haven't walked in the same shoes as other people. Right. So for me, I'm just a, 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 I'm just a guy who's trying to, you know, in my single days, trying to date and meet and do this and that. I don't, I don't have the, um, I've, or I'll say this, I've got the privilege of not worrying about, was I not chosen because of my race or, you know, because their parents wouldn't be happy. And there's all these other, a lot of commenters that were Jewish, actually, I mentioned they had similar issues where their parents don't want them to date outside, um, you know, their Jewish culture. Oh, yeah. Or, or that, or that um, they'll look down on other people for dating a white guy who's not Jewish because that's seen as like, are uh, you trying to like improve your life? And again, like you said, why, why is that seen as an improvement versus something else? Is that a societal thing? It's kind of like a, a Hollywood thing. I had a buddy who, a white dude, blue eyes. He lived in Japan. People wanted to take photos with him all the time. Oh, yeah. He was just, he, he's just a normal dude. But to them, it was like, whoa, some big deal. And it's like, is that just like Hollywood? Like, pushing this image down everyone's throat you know i mean i i don't think it's hollywood pushing that image currently i think uh, hollywood has started to at least acknowledge uh, their play in making the societal norms as dangerous as they, they've turned out to be but i think for a long time um there was a lot even me growing up as a kid there was a lot of examples where it i mean i've had i've had i've had women outside my race who I've like uh, expressed interest in let me know that, hey, my dad doesn't date, my dad won't be okay with me dating a black guy. So we can be friends, but you know. And so if that happens early enough in your dating experience, then every, every time you get into a relationship, whether they're mixed race or whatever like that, you have to wonder where your race plays is more of a factor than your character or like what it is that you're actually trying to accomplish inside the relationship. So it, that's it's so hard, just it's heartbreaking. Hard, yeah. Heartbreaking. Yeah. You know, I, I relate it this way. When, when I, when I, this is how I can relate to it. When someone cuts me off or when someone's an asshole to me, I assume they're an asshole. When someone's an, when someone might do that to to a, a a black person, they might assume that they're racist. I don't have to live with that thought. Is that person racist or an asshole? I just go, yeah. hey, they're an asshole. So yeah. like I've had this like I haven't had to worry about like um we've got this package thief who's been you know I live in Koreatown. I'm just you know our our apartment building is getting robbed left and right. We have wanted signs up from ring lights and everything. You know if you want your package, you better get it right out of the truck. Right. And, <laughs> and now I'm looking at people walking through uh, my building going is that a neighbor or are you robbing me right now? Right, right. Yeah. I don't want to have to think that way. And no one should want to have to think, am I being dumped because their dad's not going to approve of me when you haven't even met me? Yeah. It must be very, very tough. And I don't know, I guess at least having the conversation uh, will help people like me uh, maybe imagine that scenario when they never had to before. Yeah. I mean, it's, the, the, the worst, the worst part of it is like, it taps into a different space of insecurity. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this isn't a, a, like, oh, I need to, I need to act better or I need to do better. It's just, I need to be different. I just, and like what I, what I am isn't enough because of what society says, like all the preconceived notions that come with being a different race. And it's like, I will have, I mean, even during the, like, if you go, like, if I went to China, are, and uh, like when my family members have gone to China, they've had very different experiences. Like, you know, like Chinese people will, I've heard situations where Chinese people would use the N word towards black people. And conceptually, I'm just like, what problem 
do you as a society have against Africans? Like, how, like, it's just like bought into like this whole Western idea where it's like this global idea that there is a hierarchy literally based in skin color. Right. And it sucks. <laughs> just I sucks. can't imagine how hard it is. Like, like, you know, as stand-up comedians, they're always like, you got to find your voice. You got to find your voice. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a decade into telling jokes on stage. I'm still like thinking, what's my authentic self? And I don't have to deal with, I don't have to deal with being judged for all these external reasons. And I still struggle with like, what's my voice? What am I? Not, not an imprint from growing up Catholic or a single mom or this or that, but like, who's the inner child in me that's trying to get out. And then when you, when you factor in all these other issues where you're just trying to not get shot, you're trying to deal with um, uh, all you know, uh, incarceration and, and yeah, being targeted and all these things that it just adds layers and complications to it. And then now we're, you know, but and then some, some, some other people commented that they said, you know, the fact that mainstream media hasn't had a much discussion about this, it makes people ask the leads like Taisha, it makes them defend their choice. Like Rachel, right. Rachel said, Rachel Lindsay, she, she chose as a Colombian guy, um, Brian. Uh, but she 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 found herself having to defend why she chose him. And right, like, exactly. that shouldn't be put on her. But yet it is because. That's the conversation hasn't been had elsewhere. Like, do you know how hard that must be to have to like to fall in love with somebody, to literally fall in love with them and then like be afraid that you choosing the person you want to spend the uh, the rest of your life with might hurt the outlook of your race. Like, you know what I mean? Like people like it's just it's so burdenous, like yeah. to be a representative for your race is like we like. I don't want to speak for all black people, but me, I feel responsible for my race. Like whether I'm successful, whether I'm making a fool of myself, whether I'm putting myself in like, like situations. And it's like, is, you know, like when we, <laughs> and so when I, cause I, I spent a lot of time in, in, in Europe, but we would sit like around the TV and anytime there was like a terrorist or anything like that, like it, there was a terrorist attack because like half my uh, family is uh, is Muslim. So when there would be like an attack, like we would feel like, ah, it's one of, it's us, we identify with that. And like, you just know that when like there's a white bomber or like a white whatever like that, like white people would be like, oh man, it was one of us. Like, That's I mean, I feel with, with because, school shootings. I go, yeah, oh, exactly. which cousin was it this time? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a so, white like, guy with a bad haircut. Just get up there and get starting to get into a place where everybody is just like, well, I think these types of conversations are way more nuanced and agreeable than what the internet wants you to believe because, you know, the internet's being, you know, monetized based on clicking that thumbnail so yeah. for them with Tasha, they go oh i even got broken up with because he's not christian and you go okay pump your brakes she just yeah. wasn't there's a lot of things and it's like it's it's always more nuanced than that but there is societal reasons and things like that so anyway i really appreciate you sharing your opinion you, we got to get you back on the podcast so we can like stretch it out and have oh a, yeah a long form talk I, I are you in los angeles right now yeah, I'm in, I'm in Studio City right now. Did you have the, the thunder last night? That was nuts. Oh, yeah, that was real cool. Oh, my gosh. My dog was going insane. When the weather's dried out, we'll have to get you back on. We've been social distance podcasting on the roof. So we've been, like, separated, and it's, oh, very it's cool. been a good time. So if you want to come back, I'd love to talk to you yeah, long. Absolutely. No, I've had, I got COVID back in March. Oh, you did? Wow, yeah. early. Yeah. yeah. Have you been okay? Uh, yeah, everyone's all on the other side of it, but yeah, it was oh, good. it was an experience. I don't recommend it. <laughs> yeah, <don't>. that's well, <laughs> I am. That's why I've been holed up in my little studio. You've been over here before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's awesome. Tiny. It's a small spot for uh, to recently uh, engage people to you know spend <laughs> nine months. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I really appreciate you jumping on and talking with me. This is not a topic I wanted to sort of like dive into on my own. But I'm again, if you have any other thoughts with regards to anything bachelor related as you're watching the season, text me, man. We'll jump on and, and have another chat. All right, definitely. Thanks again, man. I really appreciate you coming on and talking with me. Always. Yeah. All right, buddy. Nice to talk to you again. All right, good to talk to you. I'll right, talk to you later. Buddy. Hey, thanks so much for watching this far. You win a gold star. So uh, go follow King on Instagram. He's got some good uh, stand-up comedy shows coming up, some socially distant shows if you're in the Southern California area. And uh, make sure to go follow him on Instagram. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I'm doing a live stream at 4 p.m. every Monday and Thursdays. Uh, New Year's Eve, I won't be doing a 4 p.m., but stay in touch. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the alert button to know when I'm going live. I'll be doing, for the first time ever, live West Coast live streams 
after the Bachelor episode. So if you're a night owl on the East Coast or on the West Coast, come check out my YouTube. I'll be doing live streams where you can call in, leave voicemails. We'll have topics, uh, whatever whatever's on the uh, Bachelor universe uh, plate, if you will. And I'll also be doing full recaps the morning after every episode. So I appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, like I said, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment below, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.